All right, Thank so you. we are called to order. And um, Michael, oh, let me introduce Peter Etter, who is joining the committee, uh, the board today, uh, representing the uh, the Commission on Aging. Is that right, Peter? Yep, that's correct. Yep. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the fray. Thank you. Uh, we'll get you indoctrinated as we move along here. I know Michael is also new here. So, and Michael, you had some questions. You wanted to review our process or well, something just, of that sort? A very simple question. Status O notice, O notice, O notice, one ace, uh, one uh, active. What, is, what does that mean? Oh, in that, uh, that's just, it's a way to help me categorize and keep the spreadsheet uh, in order. The zero dash notice sent means that there has been an official blight warning notice sent to that particular property. Okay. So they have been officially cited as having uh, blight conditions. Okay, that's what so I didn't know. Okay. And yes. what, one active means? What active means that, that it's probably in the warning, they're in the warning process where they were sent a warning letter and we haven't, we haven't, uh, we're trying to work out, trying to get them to improve their property without actually having to do an official citation. All right. And so the the group that's in the red originally, none of them are being fined yet. Uh no, but they're they're working toward that okay. that end. Okay. Thank you. Now I know. Oh. There is one there is one that is being fined. That is 18-005. 130 West. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You uh, uh, you know which one I'm talking. 1800. 4. 4. 1004. Okay. We're gonna go through. We're gonna go through them all. We'll go through all those that uh, need some attention today. So let's. Uh, Hang on there. Uh, first, I need to ask uh, those who were at our last meeting. So that would exclude Peter, but include Michael and David. Uh, the minutes of the last meeting, if you had a chance to review them, can I have a motion to approve them? Approve. And I heard a second. So both of you are in favor. Uh, others uh, will abstain. Uh, Mr. Edder would abstain. Okay. Um, did you also see the proposed calendar for 2021? Everybody, yes. nothing too remarkable about it. Just continuing Wednesdays at 5.30. Can I have a motion to approve that calendar? Uh, that was Michael. I got a second. Peter, thank you. In favor, say aye. Or I guess we should raise our hands, right? <laughs> so we can see what we're doing here. Thank you. That's unanimous and approved. We just got to. I'll get that to the town clerk. Okay, so uh, down to the business that brings us here. And I turn to Mr. Salito to uh, help us uh, review the status of the pending matters. Okay, we'll start with uh, case number 16-001. All right, now uh, what document should we have handy for us? Okay. Uh, at the, this point? Uh, you can have the... Uh, you could have a blight prevention officer report or okay yeah i see that yeah if that if you have that you should be able to see that through the uh through do uh, google docs uh, i've got it i saved it to my machine so i've got that here okay yeah has everyone else got that handy mm -hmm. yeah the either document, that one no, or it's all right the spreadsheet uh, is quite a mirror of them David, have you got what you need to look at? Yeah, I can make do. <laughs> okay. What, what's the second document, Bob, that you would suggest we might be looking at? Uh, I wonder if this, no, this won't work. Uh, okay, but never mind. You can use, I don't the, uh, you can use the, the uh, spreadsheet, the colored spreadsheet as well. I'll try to mirror my report to the, to the spreadsheet so that it goes in that same order. Okay. So you, you've all got at least one of those in front of you okay right the, all right then uh, thank you right uh, the officer report has a little bit of has history uh, i try to keep that as a running uh um uh, a running com uh, comment on on a property yeah so good. that's the best so case 16-001 
Um, v is, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, there's no changes on that whatsoever. And that's the one that, you know, we had talked about uh, probably sending to the lawyers to start, uh, or however you want to do it, to start the accumulation of fines. Right, okay. Uh, I, I drove past there and it's completely run down. And, no one, and it looked totally abandoned. It's only getting worse, yes. It is. Okay. Is this uh, the one we had actually started to impose fines and then realized we couldn't do that yet? Um, or no, we were going to uh, start with a lien and we forgot to impose fines first. Okay. Right yeah. So right. correct. And I, I thought we were imposing fines on. So we need to start the clock on fines. Correct. Okay. Do I hear a motion to uh, begin the process of assessing fines, My, Mr. Lamont? Uh, I think the appropriate and amount George, is. If, if George, if you check the minutes, we did that last meeting. Yeah, but then we undid it, didn't we? Or... Okay, wait a minute. No, we uh, it, what what's written here is Mr. Riley moved to correct his earlier motion to provide for assessment of fines rather than recording a lien. Okay, very good. All right, exactly right. Thank you, David. Uh, so, Mr. Solito, is that underway, or is now the time? Well, no. I uh, I think once fines are started, I think that pro process is a little unclear to me. I don't really have much to do with that. Maybe that's uh, it needs to. Once you've set the date, I would assume you could send it to the uh, to the attorneys for them to. Uh, start writing up an official notification no, well, we, we did not set the amount of the fine i don't believe the uh, last time around oh we just have to set the date i guess the, the fines are going to be uh by the fines the, are in the, the fines are dictated by the uh by the blight ordinance right okay which yeah. i think begins at uh a uh, hundred dollars a day right mm -hmm. right yeah. and i guess you can no, I'm sorry, Mr. Day of the week. How does the process work for the be getting the beginning of fines started? Who does that, and how does that work? I, I'm confident that the owner needs to get notice of the fact that fines in the amount of $100 a day are being imposed, and I expect they should that notice should be served properly, just so we can be confident that it is received. So um, whose responsibility is it to contact the attorneys to get that to happen? Yeah, I, uh, I'm happy. I'll take that on. I'll do that. Uh, I think that's. I think Jim Metzger did that in the past, and uh, uh, so I'll do that. Okay. Sixteen oh one. So. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank oh, you. Sure. We'll get this squared uh, away. Yeah. All right. Moving on to 17-011, um, I sent a video that was taken today. Um, I took it at like at three o'clock this afternoon so you could see. Allie, were you able to see that? Yeah, I was. Yeah. You're talking about 17-011. Yeah. Yes. I did yeah. see it. Camp uh, Avenue. Yes. All right. So I don't know what he's saying that everything's gone. Obviously, everything is. No, hasn't really not changed done. much. So um, I spoke uh, to the I spoke to the owner, and um, he seems to think that he's moved everything that's necessary, and um, the only stuff there is wood. And I said, well, if it was just wood, I think we could be understanding because he heats the house with the wood. Um, but after seeing the video, clearly there's still stuff there. He did yeah, say he's going to be going. Things all over the wall. It's, it's oh yeah. Like... Yeah. Yeah. This is a chronic, it's a chronic issue, mm. um, but I don't think he seems to understand, you know, what our, well, or accept what our requests are. Um, we've been trying for so long, and I don't know, and I, I know last meeting we said, let's just give him one more try, but I don't know how many one more tries we can give, right? Yeah. Right. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and unfortunately, and I didn't, I didn't want to get into because the uh, leaves and stuff are down. The backyard is becoming 
very visible. Uh, and uh, well, I just, you know what, let's just stick with the, the front, trying to get the front cleaned up as much as yeah. possible. But hey, then, Bob? Yeah, our last meeting. Okay. Go ahead, David. I, I was just going to ask for my clarification. There are two vehicles down in the driveway. It doesn't look like either one of them runs. So how do we view that? Well, they have to be unregistered. They are currently still registered, valid. Oh, registered. interesting. Once so they, they, don't, they don't run, they still pay yeah. the registration fee. Right. Once they become unregistered, then. Uh, that's something, if need be, we need to do it. But they're still registered, still have valid registrations. Okay. All right. So, just to follow up, when I did, when, sorry, when I was speaking to him, I did offer once again, I said, if you need help moving the items from the front of the house to, well, now you're saying the back of the house is visible, but before it wasn't, I said, Let's, let us know. We can work with you. And he said he didn't need help, um, but he seemed to think that everything was, you know, as good as it should be. Um, and that only the only stuff there was wood but clearly in the video that's not all that's there so well if there's a way we could send them the pictures with like red arrows pointing you know this right here needs to be right everything know. yeah there's all the the random pieces of furniture or stuff yeah yeah it's I, you know he has tarps over things like supposedly but you know it says specifically in all the notices that you know covering with a tarp doesn't remove the uh doesn't remove the violation yeah um, all right so we have given him written notice um he, yes yeah. of the blight condition yeah. so at some point we uh can he appeal that what's the part i know there's an appeal process here well just... uh, i believe i believe that any even the fines can be well, we start to, to say we're fine. The fines can be forgiven right. by the board, yeah. uh, you know, to a degree. I, I don't know that you would want to forgive costs to the town, uh, any kind of lawyer's fees. But the fines that are actually attached can be forgiven by the board if he starts to come around. And maybe he needs to see that fines are starting to be, you know, accrued, that he's going to be responsible for to get him to, to nudge him a little bit. But you have to start the clock on that. You have to start the clock on the uh, uh, um, on the um, on the fines. Yeah. Okay. So um, I believe we should now begin to assess those fines at a hundred dollars a day. He needs to get notice of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that sounds like another one that should go to council for that process. Do I hear a motion to proceed with? Uh, Fines for zero one one file zero one one. Hey George, te technically in the last meeting uh, we voted uh, uh, we voted to begin assessing fines, but we said we were going to notify the individual that if it wasn't improved by this meeting, the fines would begin. So do we need to vote on assessing the fines again or, or no? I think we do. I think we do because we also tabled the original motion to begin assessing the fines at that meeting. So I, okay, think, we fine. Should, okay. yeah, I think we should effective today. So do I hear a motion to that effect? No moved. Uh, Mr. Editor, thank you. Uh, second by whom? Michael. Thank you, Mr. Lamalt. Okay. Uh, in favor, uh, raising hands. One, two, three. Okay, that's unanimous. All right, I will get that to council as well. All right, thank you. Go ahead there, uh, Mr. Salido. Okay, uh, next one, 18-004. Uh, that's uh, still getting complaints coming in, but uh, that's obviously one that's been on the books for a while. It is already accumulating fines. Um, the only question is, uh, you know, for you to uh, not to tell you what you need to do, but at Please, some point you may want to revisit uh, what the fine accumulation is and think about um, uh, refiling the lien for an updated amount. But, you know, that can be done anytime, I guess. Right. OK. Uh, we were doing that with at least one other after our last meeting. Were we not doing that? No, we're going to, right. 
Well, uh, yeah, actually, we agreed that the board would update or have council update that uh, uh, fine, the lien on that one. So that probably didn't happen because I didn't contact council. So let me now do that. Um, if you're talking, we're, I think we're talking about 242 OK Skyway South, right? It looks, uh, like, it looks yeah. like running a used boat yard there. Right. And uh, yeah. I, they can't all be his boats, and I think he's probably charging people for it. So, right. and the place is totally unkempt. Uh, very, very, very badly. Uh, there's a big dumpster there. Uh, There's lots of things. There. This is this has uh, been that way, I think, for a long time. I know that I know the area very well. And, yeah. And and this has not been. I mean, I'm talking years. This has been. Yeah. Well, and we've we've gone farther with this one than any other property, and that is to assert a lien. Last I knew, the lien amount was thirty thousand dollars and change, I think. Um. And uh, so he and he's well aware of it. We've served him, et cetera. So uh, we were going to update the amount of the lien so that he is aware, the owner is aware uh, that it is continuing to accrue. Uh, and Michael, this is not intended as criticism, but just for your information, our tradition, at least, is we don't refer to the specific addresses of the properties. That information can be found in the town hall records, uh, but that has been our tradition. It, there's nothing wrong with it. You can do it. It's public record, but we generally don't. Okay. I will not refer to it anymore. That, that's just the, the tradition, as I say. All right. Um, okay. So drive by without having an address. <laughs> you're right. I understand. And that's, you know, that's why we have the uh, sheet. I hope you all have access to the sheet that shows both yeah. the file number and the address. And for the public's purposes, they can all get that information uh, from the town files. Um, and this one is particularly notorious, so there's certainly no harm in having mentioned it. There's some others we might want to be more discreet about anyway. Um, okay, I will contact council, get them to update that and notify the owner about uh, the continuing accrual. All right, Mr. Salito. Yes, okay, uh, moving on, 18-005. This is the, I was ho hoping that you would get a chance to look at the the videos of this because it's, uh, I had spoken with one of the complaint complainants uh, when I was there taking these videos as well. I'm just talking about the condition of the the sidewalk and the leaves and the, overgrowth coming onto the, the public property. Um, this is where, and I was even, I was speaking to this person trying to explain that this is, uh, at some point, where does blight come into where somebody just lets their property kind of go back to nature in a sense? A, there's, not, there's nothing groomed at all in the front of the, it's just overgrown trees and branches in various conditions uh and you if you look through the videos and you could see that it's it's just a mess but um i don't know where you know if, if somebody lets the rear of the front of their property and it's just natural woods is that really is that a blight issue but i'm i'm asking for advice that's really why i posted the videos because I wanted you to be able to see and get a good sense of what is what is about the house. Okay, can, uh, yeah, can I the share house what my experience was in, in visiting that location? Uh, if it's right, if you're talking about an area, it, I had to pull into the driveway to try and get off the road so that I could see it. Yes. And I couldn't go more than 15 feet in the driveway because there were branches all over the driveway. If I did, have the ability to drive into the driveway. It looked like the driveway was totally eroded on the left-hand side. So if a, a car tried to get past it, it would fall down into the woods. Uh, this this house was absolutely a shambles. Uh, if so, I think you said the last time that the man said he's still living in it. If he is, it's Spates Hotel. Uh, 
it's it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's got to be a buried a buried body in there somewhere. <laughs> it's it's if if this is acceptable in Darianne, then then everything is acceptable. I uh, that's 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 right. That's why I'm looking to for you for you know for guidance. This is what this is what it is right now. The the back of the property still has the uh, boat trailers uh, and uh, uh, items. Of, he had the. Uh, uh, it's visible from uh, Stony Brook Road oh. around the back. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Robert, Michael, you got you guys both went out there. Uh, I haven't actually physically gone to the property, but from the video that uh, Robert uh, submitted uh, and that I saw, it looks like the overgrowth that you're referring to, all the plants and down trees and things like that, are almost obfuscating the issues with the house. It's like in that particular video, I had trouble even finding the house, let alone saying that the house was in uh, disrepair. And, you know, from my reading the blight ordinance, I'm not sure that natural overgrowth back to nature's type stuff really applies. And if it's hiding the house, I'm a little uncertain. Um, I'd be I'd be interested in sit, hearing what other people think about that. I'd also uh, now that I realize I probably should have driven over there to to actually take a look no. at it. Don't do well, that. No, I w- I will do that because sometimes video doesn't show exactly what people see, right? It's so, scary. You know, I can I, I can I can do that, but I'd be interested in what other people think because from the video itself, my initial thought was. I see trees and branches and shrubbery, and when that stuff in the summertime and that's all grown in, you probably can't see the house at all from the road, like zero. You can't drive into the house. You can't. You cannot. You can't go more than fifteen feet into the driveway. In I fact, know, but I'm not sure. The, I'm not sure the blight ordinance covers the driveway. But, but there's no driveway. I mean, it just literally goes off. It's run right off to the left. So I'm I don't know sure. how because let, the let, last time you had a meeting. He was living there, and he, he can't be living there. George, do you, yeah. in your reading of the ordinance as an attorney, what do you think? Well, and I'm I'm looking at it as we speak. So a property may be determined to be blighted premises, if any of the following apply, and there are a couple obviously don't. So it is or is becoming dilapidated or unsafe, as determined by the town building official. Um, that is probably the 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 one that would most likely apply here as to blighted premises. Then there are a number of other uh, potential blighted conditions, but you have to have at least two of them. Uh, You know, there's unsightly or excessive amounts of debris, fallen trees, refuse, excavated material, along with um, collapsing or dilapidated structures, et cetera. So, if if all we can see is basically overgrowth, um, I'm not sure we've got that. And, and and of course, Mr. Salito is the is the uh, ultimate arbiter of this, uh, at least until he brings it to us. So I think when I looked at that, I, I, my concern would be: could a emergency a vehicle get into the driveway or into that house easily? Um, if there is indeed an inhabitant, if there is an inhabitant, then I think that in itself would qualify to getting it, uh, getting more forceful cleanup of it. Yeah, that certainly would constitute unsafe. Um, so have we, have we given him notice, the owner in notice in the past? Um, he does. Yeah, I believe he has. He has been served notice. Yes, he came to one of our meetings a couple of months ago, and then we provide the town provided him with a dumpster. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? It was. Yeah. Yep. And he did fill the dumpster, and, and so what you had it for now a, he actually, had it for a month. Yes, I believe mm-hmm. it was filled when when it was taken away. Uh, but so what you're seeing is actually a cleaned up version of what was there before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> I, I I see your reaction. <laughs> um, I, I didn't see it before. You know, maybe the guy's working on it, but I, I what I saw was a disaster. I I understand, but like I said, it was uh, it's just my 
un, you know knowledge of how the blight would refer to a the naturalized area. Yes, sir. Uh, George, you mentioned the dilapidated, uh, unsafe, and that it would be a building inspector that would make that assessment. Do we have a mechanism to have a building inspector go out and attempt to inspect the premises? We should start with uh, Mr. Salito. Are, you are not that town building official, do you think? Uh, am I? Yeah. No, no, I'm not. I'm not the building official. The uh, the building official does have the power to, uh, uh, if uh, upon complaint, which maybe we we can classify this, uh, to go to a property to evaluate for structural integrity. I mean, we can ask him to do that, whether he will or not. It's it's not something that's usual. But yeah. uh, can he get in the property with with without permission? <laughs> He can, the same way uh, in the fire code, we can, uh, we can go to three families and above, uh, or we can, we can tell the, uh, tell the owner that you're required to have a building inspection for three families and above. Uh, I believe the state allows a, a, a building inspector to do that on any property that he seems to think may be uh, becoming unsafe. Uh, and it would be something we can ask him about. We can, you know, we can forward something to him and ask him what yeah. his uh, position is on it, whether he feels like they can, he can do it. Okay. Well, but how do you ask him? Because I, I looked at the house and there was no way he could get out of it. Unless he walked yeah. through the woods. Yeah. Out of well, it. Yeah. He, he would just need to, because one of the, uh, uh, obviously one of the, uh, uh, in the blight law or the four, uh, um, Four individuals that can start a, a, a blight action: the building official, the fire marshal, or chief of police, and the Department of Health. So, if the building department even gets there and he can't get in, and he wants to say this is ridiculous, I can't get in. No, it's not. It's not safe. Well, that's that's what you need. You just need him to say uh, that it isn't, and that would that would really trigger uh, a continue to trigger the uh, uh the blight notice because we don't necessarily need to then we we have just the the one uh, town official is uh, giving us notice and that would work hey bob you mentioned you mentioned specifically the fire marshal and i'm yes. likening to michael's comments that the driveway is not accessible and you know in the in the we need two things category we have the clear, you know, overgrowth in terms of down trees, limbs, you know, those kinds of things that George yes. uh, referenced. Um, would the fire marshal be the right one to go out and officially look at the driveway and go, if this house caught on fire, we couldn't access it to put it out or rescue anybody. So that would give us our second that way. And then I that way the building inspector wouldn't actually have to get gain access to the property. I can ask him. Um, the uh, um, having some experience, though, some, to some degree, access doesn't just necessarily mean vehicle access. The house isn't that far away from the house that uh, they couldn't, in the event of an emergency, pull up with their engine and, and drag hose down the driveway to get at the house if need be. But that really would be his decision, and I could I could ask him to go take a look. He's familiar with the building. He he does know that it's that's it that it's an issue, and I'll ask him if he feels that is something that he could bring. He wants to bring forward as a complaint. Uh, is the, is the owner himself at risk? That at risk of harm to himself? Yes. It depends, oh, no, it depends on if he's actually living in the building or not. He says he he's, when he came to the meeting, he said he was, but given the condition of the facility, it's hard to imagine. <clears throat> I agree. Bob, can I, Bob, can I propose that we do this? Could you speak to both the fire marshal and the building inspector to see if yes. either or or both would go attempt to assess that property for us? Yes, I will. I will take care of that. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> then I guess we'll defer any further action till our next meeting. I, I do think. Uh, 
we could uh, fairly move forward with uh, a notice to him that we're going to assess fines, but uh, we'll give it a little more, give it another month. Yeah, yeah. And it did not appear occupied at all. In any I agree way. with you. I, I can't imagine he lives in there. <laughs> well, well, he does have another, he does own another property that you've corresponded with him at, right, Bob? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, we know where his alternate, alternate address is. Uh, oh, good. But the fact that he says that he lives there would only um, uh, give uh, um, uh, credence to the fact that, well, you say you live there, so we need you need ambulance access, you need fire department access in case something happens to you in the property. So we're using the fact that he says he lives there, we could actually he could use it as leverage. Yeah. To, and if he doesn't live there, it really is an attractive nuisance that could attract who knows, you know, yes. kids or what have you, and and would be very unsafe for them. Well, one of the, the when I was when I was out there and I spoke with one of the complainants, um, this person said that kids do get into the property and do things. Mm -hmm. I I explained to her, if that's the case, you have to call the police because yeah. they'll document that somebody was there and then it becomes uh it becomes on the official record and then we can work with it but just because somebody says that they're there it we can't really we can't do anything with that so i did tell them that person um that's gotta be one way or the other if he's living there how are kids getting into the house <laughs> yeah right all right okay yeah, for next month ways. thank you okay next one uh, okay we'll go to the next one 20-001 um okay this is a one this is not one that you would if you visited the property that you would see this is uh this is in the back of the property uh, the permit's been i think dead for about three years now and the back of the pro uh, the back of the house has been had been taken off or decided some sort of uh demolition had occurred back there and uh there was an attempt i think at the time three years ago to use tarps to secure the back of the building but it hasn't been touched since so the back of the house the tarps are coming off the uh uh there's holes there was reports of feral cats in ha uh, inhabiting the house this is what we have uh, the the uh, neighbor of this one was really she told me anytime i wanted to come over to check progress on the what's happening on the back of the house to to please do so but it hasn't changed since i had first seen it uh, uh, let's see oh sorry about this let's see 11 12. Oh, earlier in the year yes yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah earlier this year and nothing changed uh, we we have proof that he did receive the warning notice and he did receive the notice the violation notice so i have his card his signature and he's just not doing anything to contact us or to remedy the situation at all i think this is a case where uh personally the go to the next step and then notify him that you're going to start to he's going to start accumulating fines and it might get him get him going i mean all he needs to do is have a crew go and you know readdress the back of the house get it get it sealed up if he's not going to work on it but that's that's all we have yes okay well david uh we did at our last meeting actually uh vote to begin that process uh of assessing fines so mr riley i hate to pile on your plate but if you're going to contact the attorneys anyway uh yeah. maybe we can go ahead and, and maybe and maybe that notification will be enough to get the guy to you know engage with us yep <clears throat> okay yeah. That was the property I walked in back of. And there were no tarps up, but they, they had nailed on uh, plywood planks, big square plywood planks onto the back of the house, I guess, to try and keep animals or, or to try and keep uh, rain out of the house. So that it was, you know, the house itself was uh, totally destroyed. Uh, wood planks covered, it did not appear to be occupied. No, no, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will ask counsel to uh, notify him that fi fines actually have begun as of uh, November 12th. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, last one is seventeen dash zero zero five. Uh, the uh, from the last meeting, official notice was sent. Now this is the first notice. This was not sent through the attorneys. This was just sent from me through uh, using certified mail. Hopefully, as a return receipt. We haven't. I haven't received anything back. Uh, I haven't received the card back or anything back yet that he's received that notice. So he probably uh, has it because there's a big sign out front saying house for sale and they might have moved. Well, that, that's we're pretty sure that it is vacant now. There was uh, uh, there was some uh, tenant issues in the past, right, uh, right. Allie? Uh, yeah, but the, the tenant that I was helping in the past no longer lives there. Right. I yes. don't know if there's a tenant there now, but the one that we had worked with in the past. Um, there's been no cars. They're just. The Higgins Group is selling it. You could ask them some questions, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I never heard of the Higgins Group, but the Higgins Group has a sign out. Um, uh, if, like, if you, if you want to wait, wait another month to, to see if he responds. And then uh, if he doesn't, then we could go through the attorneys to have marshal service done for the property. That's, that's those are options. Yep. Go ahead. In the absence of a motion to proceed to assess fines, I guess we'll let it go another month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the last thing I don't think I put it on here. Not a big deal. Uh, well, actually, it's on. It is on my report. Seventeen dash zero one nine. It's uh, it's listed under uh, in the warnings, uh, and I did send again. This is one of those where yeah, there's there's items strewn about. It hasn't really gotten uh, much better, but just your opinion on uh, if you looked at. I, I did send a video. Hopefully that came through yeah. uh, to see what that looked like, uh, and your advice on whether or not we need to go to a, a notice for that or whether we're okay with it's going to let's just say status quo because things disappear things get cleaned up and then they get back to where they were uh, uh so if you've seen it seen that particular property 17-019 yeah. i saw it on december 7th uh no not december 7th yeah december 7th and uh there were pots and pans all over the front yard. There were cylinders that, or that hold, I don't know what they hold, gasoline or or uh, cylinders that hold, uh, you know, I say gasoline, propane or or some, some sort of uh, liquid. And uh, pots and pans uh, and garbage. There was garbage all over the front one and plastic bags. Uh, totally cluttered the driveway. I couldn't go into the house because it was occupied. It had two dri cars in the driveway. But beyond that, I looked beyond that, and I could see just all sorts of clutter in the driveway. Yeah. And has been there for a long time. David. Uh, Bob, uh, have you been able to contact these people directly? Or She's uh, – Allie can answer this better, but she's not very uh, uh, cooperative. Cooperative. <laughs> Cooperative. Okay. She right, is well, very yeah. resistant to the efforts, and she had. There's. I don't think we're going to make much progress with another phone call. Okay, that's have that's the fine. We, we have have the issue. Issue. I'm happy to call, but it did not end pleasantly. No, I think you ought to move then to the next uh, to a, a more formal piece of action. Okay. Well, well, hang on one second. Hang on one second, Peter, because the other. Um, uh, what I had in my notes here was that we only had one blight condition uh, as opposed to two, but there was an unregistered vehicle near the front of the road, which I presume is that PT cruiser vehicle that was sitting there. Yeah. And we were going to, we we're going to try to ascertain if that vehicle is on town property or if it represents a hazard with regards to plowing or whatever, how do we do that? Or have we been able to do anything with that? I did send an email to uh, 
the police department, we were going to have them check, and I haven't gotten anything back from them. I have not followed up, however, uh, on that. I did do the initial uh, investigation. And as it turns out, I, I will have to get in touch with them again for the last item I was going to bring up today, uh, a new uh, a new case that, that, that came okay. forward. Well, yeah. in light of that, can I can I propose that we give it one more month, give Bob time to check with the police department, let's figure out about that vehicle because that would clearly give us the two items that we require, right? Absolutely. Yep. Yes. And okay. the letter was just sent on the seventh, apparently, if I if I read the the notes properly. So the owner's entitled to a little more time, I would think. Uh, for am I reading it wrong? Wasn't this one? You're on the wrong one. Yeah, seventeen zero one nine. Zero one nine. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, you skipped one, Bob. I, I presume you skipped it. Uh, because there's probably been an act of change in it, and that was the 17004, and they are oh, yeah. completely over uh, that house. Yeah. The yeah, house was is completely done over, uh, inside and outside. And there's a huge a dumpster outside, which is getting rid of everything that was inside. Yes. And it looked to me like someone's bought the house. And I tried. I talked to some of the workmen, but it looks like it's going to be a nice looking house when it's finished. Yeah, that's that's a long-standing uh, uh, that the <clears throat> tenants who are not paying rent since it was sold. How long ago has it been? Two years. Well, no, it was foreclosed on, and the house was sold about a year ago. They finally were evicted um, in November. I think right. it was November, or maybe it was the end of October. So, but now yeah, the process will be been, yeah, they've been active in in cleaning everything out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. we're not planning no, any no. action there. Yeah, uh, that's what. I had moved that to the watch list just to keep an eye on it to see that everything is getting cleaned up and eventually will it'll disappear. It'll go down to gray. So did we conclude the watch all over the place, yeah. Uh, uh, there so was there was one more I did want to bring up just briefly. It was yep. new a uh, new um um uh, New complaint uh twenty dash zero zero three you'll see it in green there it's it's uh, it's in bold in there um that particular address this this is another one it will need to be done there's two um there's vehicles on the uh on the road one's unregistered full of tires the other two have current registrations but doesn't look like it's moved recently. Tons of stuff in the yard all, all over the place. And that complaint came in. And uh, I'm, I'm working on getting the warning notice out to them. This is this is new. But this one is there. I put it on because it will be one that will, will it's going to take time to uh, uh, to remedy. Good. OK. Yeah, there's nothing that has to be done at this point uh, by the board, just in, for uh, information purposes. Good. OK. All right, that's uh, that's it for the update. Then I'll solicit any other business. Yeah, David. Yep. I just wanted to ask because I did not see Bob. The your report, your written report, is in one of the emails that I missed. Right. Uh, it was sent. The, the this this one right here was sent late, so you might it might you might have it now. If not. Uh, I should be able to find it in my in my emails what you're telling me. Yes. Yes. Get out yeah. of it. That's all it's I not do. just get back to me like you have and I'll I'll send it as a direct attachment. Everything that's not a video will be sent as direct attachments to your email now. Make it easier. The okay. only thing you'll have to go through uh uh the the uh, Google Drive would be would be videos. That's it. No uh, no documents. Okay? That's great. And the videos uh are there they're somehow part of the record here. Um, where are they saved? If uh, somebody wants to see uh, them, I have them say. Well, yeah, no, I have them saved. Not they're, they're only to show on the uh, uh, on the Google Drive, but they all the videos are part of uh, the uh, digital file that I have here. Everything's been placed in the digital file. So in the event of a uh, you know anyone wants a file search or information. It's all there. It's all been saved and it's been documented. But they've got to go to your 
your computer, your your file folder? Uh, not necessarily my computer, but our drive. It's the town. It's a drive that the town has access to. So. Uh, uh, um, okay. That's where it is. But I, I haven't figured out how to save it to my own machine so far. So I, I someday somebody's going to want to see these videos, and we've got to make mm -hmm. sure they're available. They um, will be available. The, they're like I said, they are they're saved to uh, one of the town's hard drives, so they're not going anywhere as long as all those records remain as part of the town uh, documentation. And, and in the future, do you suppose there's a way we can show them during a meeting? Uh, I'm not. There is a. I think I may have to be um, tagged in as a. a, a coordinator or something because yeah, like the a host. at the bottom that says you know show my screen where yeah. i can call up the video on my screen and it will show you know in my little block here right okay uh, but to okay. that degree well, we'll uh, worry about that some other time i did yeah you know, but uh, maybe some of the other platforms allow you you know allow you to be able to see it full screen but uh that's uh i'm not aware of that as a uh, as of yet but I, mean, I, I greatly appreciate I greatly appreciate what you do. And again, there are not that many, I think, that are not unmanageable the way it is right now. If you had an inventory of many more, it probably would make more sense to take that extra step. Oh, yeah. In, in terms of saving them somewhere? Yeah, or being able to pull them up, George, if we had like 15 to discuss uh, on, on one, one occasion, one yeah. meeting. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks. Anything else? I have just a, a just a very quick general question. Sure. Um, the Darien Library. Not too long ago, I parked next to a car that was completely cluttered. Completely cluttered. Not just not just the back, but the driver's side, the passenger side. And I was just wondering. Uh, and I took the license plate down. I'm just wondering where does that fit into blight? It's not really. I guess it's property, but. Is that purely a police, a motor vehicle matter? I think that one's for Allie. I don't think it falls within our purview, but you know, clearly a hoarding problem of some sort. I was just going to say, chances are, it sounds like it's potentially hoarding. Um, I mean, it's hard to say in the Darien Library. Do we know if they're a Darien resident? You know, it could be someone from another town. Um, if you follow them and they park in the driveway, and then we, and you're concerned, you, people can always make a, a report. Um, the human services and the fire marshal's office um, handle all the hoarding cases in town. So if there was ever a concern that someone had, they certainly can call. I think they'd start with the fire marshal and then they usually reach out to me. Well, they do reach out to me for every case and we monitor those on an ongoing basis. So if you do find out more information and you're concerned, Peter, then certainly let us know. And I we can- the, I have the, the license plate number. You can look up uh, if you, to see, does it look like it was driven there or was it abandoned there? Oh, no, 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 it, 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 I've seen it there a number of times. No, it's driven there. Uh -oh. it, it's okay. definitely driven there. People in, are- In today's know. day, he might be living in his car. <laughs> it was a lady. Yeah. Cold out there, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. well, I know that there's a way to- uh, We're doing that now. I know that there's a way to find out if the registration's valid just through uh, using the internet, Connecticut DMV website. But uh, um, as to it will not give you a person, an owner's name or a person's address, just if a, yeah. if a plate is is registered, it's an active registration or it's expired. Yeah. So that would be the police department could look up, you know, if they can. They, they're limited to what they can do with the, the state's uh, DMV computers, but they do have the capability of uh, uh, you know, finding out where it's registered if, if, it, if there's a concern. Mm -hmm. And if you're concerned for the person's safety, then certainly reach out to the police and they can, you know, make sure that it's safe to drive that car. I mean, can they see through the windows and everything? I don't know. I don't know how that person backs up. Couldn't possibly be using a rear view mirror inside the car. Uh, just to complete the circle as to your question, Peter, uh, blight conditions relate only to residential real property. Okay. In the town. Okay. Anything else, folks? Did I hear a motion to adjourn from Mr. Lamolt, seconded by Mr. Edder, and I think that was unanimous. Thank you all. We'll happy see you. Happy nice holiday, everyone. Yeah, yeah happy holidays.
Stay safe and enjoy the holidays. Stay well. Take care. Take care.